Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to, to uh, Fortune Brainstorm Tech 2015. And Susan, welcome to you. Thank you. Great to be here. So you have some superlative numbers associated with you. For example, you're employee number 16 mm -hmm. of Google. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. But I think my favorite. If I had started a day earlier, <laughs> I would have had a couple of, I would have been even earlier. Oh, that's, that's there interesting. There like three people who started the day before me. And, but are they still at Google? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Right, so you, 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 you should move up in the ranking of, of people who are still there. But the number that I want to share with, with all of you that is truly extraordinary about Susan is the number five, because not so very long ago, Susan just had her fifth child. And uh, which makes one, yeah, I think that's worthy of applause. <laughs> so, you know, you're an early employee of Google, you're running YouTube, and oh, by the way, raising a, raising a family of five. How does that work? <laughs> uh, well, let's see, you're pretty busy. Um, that's maybe the short answer. But, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, I love kids. Um, I love work. And I think, you know, at some level, I just love creating things and building you, you've done products. A good job creating and like that. kids are very rewarding projects. Um, <laughs> building companies is really rewarding too and uh, I enjoy doing both. And, and you know by way of doing a very brief re review of your career, mm -hmm. somebody told me recently that you associate each child with uh, each major assignment. Could you just remind everybody of that very quickly? Yeah, so <laughs> I've associated each of my kids with different stages of my career and with Google's career, and um, because, or Google's uh, progress, because you know each time I'm going on maternity leave, so when I think about things in time, I think about like, well, what was I doing, and was I pregnant, or did I have a baby, and um, so I joined Google Pregnant, so my first baby I just associate with Google. He's, he was actually the Google baby, so a lot of early Google pictures, he's actually in the pictures um, of the company. And uh, then the second one, I went on maternity leave. And while I was on leave was when I decided to work in advertising. Um, like it really came to me the power of our traffic and how much opportunity there was. And so when I came back from maternity leave, I decided to work on AdSense um, and Google's network products. Um, and I wound up spending a decade afterwards building uh, a lot of Google's advertising products. Um, and then the third one um, is like really more around when we acquired YouTube and we were doing more in content. And then the fourth one, I, I say it's a double click baby because, um, <laughs> because we, she, we acquired double click um, right as she was born. And um, it was a little much to have both happening. You know, it was a very significant acquisition, $3.1 billion. And um, so I wanted to make sure that happened. And then the last one, um, it came about right after I had joined YouTube, so she's definitely the YouTube baby. Um, but I think each baby brings um, like a, a good era um, of opportunity. So um, I'm looking forward to this baby and opportunity. And maybe in the future you'll have new Google assignments for your grandchildren. Uh, yeah, well, uh, that, yeah, maybe. Getting ahead of ourselves. I think I'm going to have to find a way to make, move my career forward without having children because <laughs> I'm definitely at the end of my rope there. So um, okay. the house is full. So, so we have a lot of ground to cover. And uh, I'll remind everybody that relatively soon I'll be asking for, for your questions uh, as, as well. Um, let's just deal with the elephant in the room, Susan. Sure. Go Google's this fa uh, YouTube's this fascinating uh, business. It was dismissed when Google bought it, when you were involved in buying it. A lot of people have gotten past those those early dismissals. Yeah, I would argue you have more competition than ever before, and the the one that everybody wants to talk about is Facebook. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you think about that competition, and particularly from Facebook. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I mean, I think first of all, it's really important to set the context and remember that the the video TV market is just a huge market. Um, it's huge from pretty much any way you measure it. If you look at time. Um, Americans, for example, spend on average four hour, over four hours a day, which I find pretty incredible, um, watching TV. Um, ad dollars, 100 and over 150 billion. Um, subscription revenue, over 250 billion, or approximately 250 billion. So it's a very big market. On the other hand, you see that it's, it's changing. Um, you see that the younger generation and, um, is migrating a lot more to online video. Like if you look at the recent Nielsen numbers that just came out for 18 to 24, you see that they're down for the first half of 2015, 16%. So you just see this is a big market. And I think you know, Facebook and Twitter and you know, everybody else has recognized this is a big opportunity and they're coming 
into the market. Um, I think for any, and I, you know, and I don't think that's a surprise because of the size of the opportunity um, and really like the movement from traditional to online is really what I think is the most important um, move. Um, with regard to Facebook specifically, um, I mean, I think you know, they're, they're going to do interesting things, but we're focused. We have a lot of things we know we need to get done. Um, innovation is always key in technology. And um, you know, the most important thing is that we keep innovating, making our products faster. Um, and you know, one of the things that surprised me about YouTube is just the engagement that our fans and our creators have. And so we're really trying to continue um, to encourage that and, and grow our scale uh, and business overall. I think, let's say five years ago, the, 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 the dialogue, it was all about YouTube. There, there was nobody else. There was no dialogue about online video. It was YouTube. Mm -hmm. Now it's everybody else. So cup half full, you'll make the case, well, that's great. We're doing great. They're doing great. Yeah. Everybody's doing great. The cup half, cup half empty is now they're doing things that, go, mm -hmm. that YouTube isn't necessarily doing. So the ice bucket challenge, you know, grows to prominence on Facebook, not, mm -hmm. not YouTube. Do you need to react is the question I'm asking. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we, we did have a lot of ice bucket challenges on, on YouTube. Um, I mean, I think the thing that we see, you know, when I look at YouTube, I see all the things that we know we want to do. I see an important list of important projects for us to be able to move the company forward. That's a good opportunity for me to ask you, what's at the, what are the top three things on that list? Yeah, and so, um, but when, when I, um, and so, you know, I look at that and I say, like, we have a lot of things to do. Um, and we know what we need to get done. Let's get those, those done. And then when I look at our overall numbers of the business, uh, I see that we're accelerating. I see that um, you know, we have an amazing base. We have over a billion users um, globally, which is uh, very significant. Um, um, the, our watch time year on year is growing over 50% year on year. Um, and so you have this gigantic base of users, and it's still growing at the rate that it's growing. And we've actually seen acceleration, um, which I'm, uh, so I feel like you know, we still have, we have a very significant opportunity ahead. Um, on the numbers. Sure. The, there's this, there's this, uh, you know, dispute or not dispute, but dialogue. dialogue I guess the best way I can think of. Facebook says they have four billion views. You, YouTube says we don't think views is very relevant. You, you, you use the expression watch time. Yeah. What is your watch time, and how does that compare with others? Yeah. Um, well, so our watch time is uh, it's over it's hundreds of millions of hours, and um, we're growing, we're accelerating. And so from the time that I got there until you know when I look at our numbers now, what I see is the business is, you know, usually when the, you have the, the law of large numbers, which is that, you know, thing, your numbers decline over time because you have a larger base. And so it's, it's very encouraging to me to see that we have this large base of a billion users, hundreds of millions of hours, and that we have acceleration in, in our watch time and in our numbers. So, um, you know, overall, I feel pretty encouraged from that perspective. You know, I do, I do think like the important thing is not just like, what was that view? Like did a person, you know, Facebook views are very different. Um, they're in a feed, they're autoplay. Ours are users actually clicking. But we want our users to engage. We want them not just to have like, you know, um, be channel surfing. We want them to actually say, I saw a video, I cared about that video, I commented on the video, I saw the video, I continued watching it. And that's why watch time is a really good metric is because we know a user continued to watch it, um, they watched it to the end, and then they watch something else afterwards. Do you wish that YouTube broke out its revenues and profits and, 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 and some relevant financial statistics like that? I mean, it might make my life easier because everyone's always trying to guess what the numbers are. So then it could be like, oh, here they are. Um, and people wouldn't be guessing. Well, I have um, a great idea for you right now. <laughs> so, so yeah, well, I, I've seen analysts who've guessed that 2014 revenues were around $4 billion and mm -hmm. profits not much, if any. Is that, are, the, are, those, are those fair numbers? Yeah, so unfortunately, I can't really disclose anything. Um, so, but you want to. Well, it would probably make it easier because then you wouldn't have to ask me this question. Right. I could just like say, oh, well, you could look at uh, you know this number. Yeah. But uh, no, I mean in serious, you know, we uh, um, we don't break the numbers out. But overall, like you know, we've been seeing really good growth of our partner revenue, um, and um, so far so good. Talk about your approach to dealing with you know, star talent versus the great unwashed. You've had a couple yeah. different strategies. Where are you now? Yeah. Well, I think one of the things that I did not fully appreciate until I came to YouTube was 
the intensity of the relationship between the viewers, and particularly like the younger viewers, and the fans. Um, and if any of you have ever been to VidCon, I don't know how many of you have actually been to VidCon, um, it's actually, it's a creator, it's a conference uh, for the video creators. But there are tons and tons of young people who attend this conference, and they wait in line, like literally like 8 o'clock in the morning, just to have a photo or a picture with their creator. Um, and then you ask them, like, was that worth it? Like, you know, waiting there for, you know, six hours, eight hours? And they'll say, like, definitely. Like, definitely it was worth it. Um, and so I think what we see is we see these, this very um, significant set of creators. Um, like, when you look at the Variety, Variety does a study. The top five, um, the top five stars in, in among teens right now all come from YouTube. They don't come from Hollywood. They come from YouTube. And so... One of the big initiatives I've had is like, well, how do we continue to grow them on YouTube? How do we make sure that they're able to do even more on YouTube, extend their reach, generate the revenue, um, have all those things happen on YouTube? And is, is the I, can you get exclusivity with them, and do you want exclusivity with them? Yeah, I think you know the exclusivity is you know I mean sure exclusivity would be nice, um, but I don't think it's necessary. And the reason I don't think it's necessary is because YouTube. Is their, is their home. It's where their fans are. It's where they were you know, born. Um, they know that medium. It's where they're connecting with their audiences. And so if we can actually supply the opportunity and the, and the, the revenue yeah. for them, then a lot of times they want to stay. On the other hand, sometimes these things are complementary. You know, they'll, they'll actually do a book or they'll do a tour. Um, you know, we see like you know traditional stars like the late night uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Like you know, we'll do things like on traditional TV, late night TV, and then put stuff on YouTube and have the two reinforce each other. And so you know, I like that hasn't been a focus of ours is the exclusivity. The, the focus has been how do we grow them? How do we do even more on YouTube? So YouTube is their home, but like many people who live in Aspen, they have second and third and fourth homes as well, and that's fine with you. <laughs> I mean, it's their it's their main home. So you know, we like to we like to see them like their users. I mean, we had we have a creator um, who stopped uploading as much as she um, as she used to, and you know, you like her fans all were you know were right here. Like, where are you? Why aren't we hearing from you? And so you know, these are the people who made these pe made these creators a star. And so it's really important for them to keep this up on YouTube, not just for, not for YouTube's sake, but for their own sake and their own connection with the fans. Late last year, YouTube introduced something called the YouTube Music Key. Would you tell everybody what that is and how it's going? Yeah. Um, so we, we launched a, a um, music service, uh, um, which we launched in beta. And it's got a couple of key features, which is that users can see uh, the music corpus ads free. Um, they can see, use, listen to the music um, offline. Um, and they can background, which means that they have it on their phone and they can go and check their email or browse the web or do whatever they, else they want while they have the YouTube um, music in, their, in, in the background. And you know, YouTube just has a, a really um, impressive collection of music. So if any of you are music aficionados like, and there's a specific song you want, like, we probably have it and like 10 other times it was recorded on YouTube. And um, so we launched this in beta which has been really, really useful for us. We have learned a lot of things. Our user, we launched it to a subset of our um, most um, like very heavy music users. As a subscription service, yes? As a subscription service, yeah. Um, um, and um, they've given us a lot of feedback. And so we have taken that feedback. We are um, re-adjusting you know, it based on that feedback and um, with plans to launch you know, later this year. And can, what will that launch look like? I mean, and, and how should we understand it? Are, are, will, will, should we see Music Key as being on par with Apple Music and Spotify? Well, I think it's a little bit different um, because the music and, and the corpus that we have is very different. Um, it's different because we have, you know, first of all, we have the music videos, which, you know, it, like being able to see your favorite music uh, artists perform a song and see what they imagined when they created that song. It, it's really magical, and so being able to have that. But then on top of that, we have all the user-generated clips of like, other people having taken that song and done covers with it. So our corpus is very different. 
Um, and I think that's, that's been, so we're sort of thinking about how to lean into that more and to enable users to be able to get both the videos and really make that important, um, as well as um, getting all of the other user generated and uploaded content. My last question before opening it up, um, you mentioned earlier that you were involved in the double click acquisition. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of small and not so small companies doing various music things, SoundCloud mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Will YouTube be acquisitive, and I don't mean in a small way, but potentially in a big way? Yeah. Um, I mean, so in the ads world, we did a lot of acquisitions. Um, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of money um, kind of across, buying different um, businesses. And, you know, in general, the way it worked is we had a strategy, and we said, this is our strategy, and this is where we want to go. And, um, and when we looked at the, at the strategy, we said, these companies, like AdMob, for example, was an acquisition that we did. Um, we said, you know what, mobile app advertising, and again, this was a, a long time ago. Um, yeah. And I didn't have a baby right at that time, so I can't remember the year. <laughs> um, so uh, we did AdMob acquisition, and like we saw app installs are going to be really significant, app advertising is going to be very important. Um, we understood it would like, increase the, the display um, inventory, and so we did the acquisition. I think with YouTube, what I'm seeing is, is that a lot of the hard work for us to do uh, is, there's a lot of hard work we need to do, um, but if there is a company that helps us get to our strategy faster um, or acquire users that we don't have, then we'll buy, then we will buy companies. So um, internal product development first, but absolutely yes to an acquisition I think, if, if you find one, including I a big one. Yeah, I think, I mean, anything that helps us move faster is going to, that, that if we look, if I look at our strategy and say, look, we can get here a year faster because we have people and they know this business, then yes, we're gonna look at that and we're gonna do that acquisition. Because I think this is a big market. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. Time to market is important. Having the right um, skill set is really important. And um, so, like, I don't really, I, like, I don't really care how we get there. As long as we get there, um, and we have, um, you know, the, a, a great product with, you know, um, a billion plus users growing. Questions? Um, I have a question right there, and there's your microphone, Wenda. Please tell us who you are. Uh, Wenda Millard from Media Link. Hi, Susan. Hi. Uh, advertising. Um, where do you see the video advertising uh, moving this year, particularly given? Uh, the predictions on the upfront television upfront uh, numbers being down significantly. Will you be the happy recipient of those dollars? Yeah. Um, well, so I think the I think video advertising it makes sense. I mean, I think uh, advertisers generally move wherever the the users go, and that has always been my theory. So you have to adapt the ad formats to be able to work with where the users are. And um, given the growth that we have at YouTube, I think there is going to be dollars that are shifting over there. Um, YouTube has been um, you know, really more of a brand um, opportunity. If you look at our advertisers and you look at how that works, there's a lot, of, a lot of opportunity from a branding. And we're working on building out that whole suite, like how we do the measurement, how we do the buying. We had our preferred upfront this year that went really well. Um, and so I think, yes, I think dollars are going to move over to YouTube um, and, and over to online, too. There's one right in the front row over here. Your microphone's just coming to you. Hi, Susan. Jason Rapp from Science Inc. What do you think about virtual reality and how will YouTube uh, respond to new developments there? And are there any other technologies or uh, new user experiences that you're tracking right now? Yeah. Um, you know, so, so I will, since we started it talking about kids, um, I actually do use, I, like, you know, I show stuff to my kids and see what they say. Uh, and like, I think, you know, they're sort of wired digitally. They've been using it since they were very little. And so it's interesting, their perspective. Um, and I showed my kids some of the early VR stuff, and um, you know they just they looked at it and they were like, "Wow, this is going to change everything. Um, this is just going to change like the, my entertainment." They were like, "I don't have to go to the movies anymore. I can like just you know put on the 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 VR." Um, I think there's opportunities in advertising with VR. So in general, I think you know it's very early, but I do think VR is a really interesting technology for us to continue to invest in. And when you say us, you you mean YouTube. In addition to Google, right? Yeah, YouTube and Google. Mm -hmm. Are you in a hurry, though? I mean, is it too? Of course, it's not too late. You said you think it's new, but others have made big investments in VR, and, and you haven't. Yeah. Uh, well, we, you know, we've done, we have a cardboard, um, which has been, um, you know, which we're working on, and I think um, it's a, it is an interesting area. I think we're just getting started, and I think we're going to see a lot of opportunity there in the future.
One, I want to go somewhere back there. Is there one way back there? If not, we'll come right here. Right there. And then the very last one, right there. You should have a microphone nearby you. There you go. Hey, Susan, how you doing? Jordan Hi. from Ocho. I'm uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Where are you from? Jordan from Ocho. Mm -hmm. uh, your, your growth figure is really impressive over the past year. Are you seeing those come from PC primarily or from mobile? And regardless of what that case is, how are you pushing product in one direction or another to affect that balance? Yeah. Great. Thank you for asking. Um, so mobile has been really important to us. Like you asked me at one point what are our top three priorities, and I, I didn't really answer. So I'll give you the quick answer. It's mobile, mobile, mobile. <laughs> and um, you know, we are seeing over 50% of our um, views coming from mobile. So we, are, you know, we have the majority of our views on mobile platforms. And we're going to, I think, you know, a lot of our focus is on how we continue to make that better. What are the UI experience? What are the creation experiences? How do we make it really fast? Um, so we're really continuing to invest in mobile. I think mobile is changing everything. Uh, and it's going to continue to change it more in the future. Susan, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.